Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Melissa Abache. I, I work at Coach University in the International And today's webinar topic is our non-thesis master application. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong slide. I have to go back. Just realizing on our webinar, we see that you're today. We're going to talk security at Coach University. New as you see on your see uploaded to our YouTube channel, which you can find typing Coach University International Admissions. And because you have been registered for the webinar, you will receive an email with the link to our YouTube channel um, uh, two days later. So by Saturday, sorry, by yeah, by Friday. Um, the webinar. Uh, we're expecting to complete it in around one and a half hours, depending on how many questions you have. And we will try, of course, to answer as many questions as possible today to make the most of this opportunity. So having said that, um, I'll give you an overview of what we're going to cover today. So yes, we will give a very, very brief overview of Coach University, especially for those of you who are joining us from outside of Turkey, and you may not be that familiar with our institution. That's not going to take too much time. We know that you're here to hear more about these exciting new programs that we have from our faculty members. We will give you also an overview of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering so that you get a picture of the overall graduate community that you would be joining as a student here. Um, and then we will spend a lot of time talking about our masters in data science and our masters in cybersecurity from two of our faculty members, which are very lucky to have today and we'll talk about them shortly. We will give you an overview of how does the admission process works, how do you apply for these programs, um, some updates with regards to test cancellations in light of the coronavirus um, restrict, the, sorry, restrictions that we have in place, not only in Turkey, but in several countries or worldwide. We will talk about the tuition for these master programs and scholarships available. And very briefly, we will talk about support and specific opportunities for international applicants. And then we will have uh, 15 to 20 minutes to answer your questions. So make sure that you, um, if during the presentation, something comes up to, to your head in terms of things you want to ask, please keep that in mind so that we can ask, you can ask those questions at the end. So to start, Koç University is located in Istanbul, Turkey. Sorry, I'm just going to, I see, please move this window away. I hope you're, maybe you're seeing that yellow box or not, but um, Koç University, as I was saying, is located in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, for those of you who have been to Istanbul before, you know what a beautiful and cosmopolitan and big city it is. We as an institution, we were set up 26 years ago. So we are a young university, small in terms of our total student numbers and in terms of our faculty numbers. So right now we are um, around 7,000 students, 500 faculty members. However, being small and young hasn't stopped us from achieving already the mission of the university, which is to become a center of excellence that provides world-class education and creates new knowledge for the benefit of society. So on this slide, I don't want to dwell too much, but you will see that we have um, we have four graduate schools. And then in those graduate schools, we offer master programs and PhD programs. And then we will look into more detail about the specific programs offered in the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. What we want to emphasize here is that we are a research intensive university, meaning we put a lot of resources and efforts and we find the best talent all around the world to join our graduate programs in terms of our faculty members, our students, and the support staff that helps them achieve their best. Okay. I'm gonna go to the next slide. This is one of my favorite slides because it shows um, how beautiful our campus is. We are located in the Northwest part of Istanbul on the European side, 
very close to the Black Sea. So rather than telling you very specific things about the campus and the facilities, what I want to highlight is that you can find a lot of videos um, such as aerial tours, um, dormitory tours in our YouTube channel so that you can get an idea of the campus. But it is one of the things that it's uh, the most impressive about us as a university and that our graduate students enjoy the most in terms of classroom spaces, lab spaces, um, cultural facilities, etc. Okay, so I'm going to move forward here. Okay, so um, we're very, very honored to have here today three of our faculty members and they will, of course, introduce themselves in more detail and talk about their uh, background and what they're working on. But um, the first speaker is Professor Osgur Barish Akan, who is the Dean of the College of Engineering and is also the director of our Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. He's a very busy person. We're very grateful for him to be here today and introduce the Graduate School. He will also be answering some of your questions at the end. Then we will hear from Professor um, Barish Agun from our Department of Computer Engineering, who is our lead for today to give you the information about the Masters in Data Science. And then we will hear from uh, Professor Altekin Kupchu, also from our Department of Computer Engineer, Engineering and the Director of our Crypto Group. You will hear more about this group uh, on his uh, part of the presentation and who is the lead for our Masters in Cybersecurity. So now I'm going to hand over to Professor Osgur Barishakan, who is going to give you an overview of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. Well, thank you, Melissa, uh, for an excellent introduction of our university. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this um, uh, webinar. We are glad to have you around, and I'll be happy to answer your questions at the end. So I won't take your uh, too much time. I'll just go over very briefly of the uh, programs and the structure of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering, and then pass the stage over to my colleagues who will um, further elaborate these two uh, brand new uh, master's programs in cybersecurity and data science, which is the main objective why we are here today. So we are um, an institute providing, uh, roughly speaking, uh, 30 plus graduate programs uh, in master's and PhD structures. So these include mainstream uh, classical uh, engineering and sciences masters and PhD programs like uh, computer engineering, electrical engineering, industrial engineering, mechanical, chemical and biological, or physics, mathematics, etc. And in, a, in addition to them, we also have some um, um, interdisciplinary masters and PhD programs like biomedical science and engineering, computational science and engineering, material science and engineering. And on top of all these excellent and very successful programs, uh, we have decided to launch uh, these two uh, master's programs on cybersecurity and data science in non-thesis option, which we will uh, elaborate uh, very shortly. So when we look into the uh, graduate program, graduate studies uh, and their structures uh, in general, uh, so if, if we can go to the next slide, Melissa, please. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in PhD, uh, it is, uh, in general, like four years, uh, if you come with your master's degree already, or if you come with your bachelor's degree only, it is uh, expected, it's expected duration is five years. So four years correspond to seven, minimum seven courses, uh, which is 25, 21 credits. And if you come with a bachelor's degree, you're supposed to take 14 courses. And then qualifying exam, and then research thesis that you're supposed to uh, contribute to your um, area of, of study uh, with a novel um, contribution, and you will have some uh, additional non-credit courses. So I'm not going to go into details of the PhD study, but if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer at the end. So we have two types of masters, one with thesis, and the other one is with out thesis. So uh, with thesis, it is two years, and you're supposed to take uh, seven courses in your coursework, uh, corresponding to 21 credits, and then you're expected to uh, write down your own research thesis. And this is quite similar to PhD research thesis, and it, it is supposed to convey some uh, novel contribution to your research area. In the masters without thesis or non-thesis masters, 
which is the main uh, type of study in these two new graduate programs that will be, will be elaborated today, uh, you are supposed to take 10 courses. These 10 courses are um, um, scattered over three semesters, fall, spring, and summer, basically. And these 10 courses correspond to 30 credits, okay? And uh, on top of that, you're expected to finish a final project. So you may ask the question, what is the difference between final project and research thesis? Well, research thesis uh, is mainly uh, research involved, more research involved, and you're expected to really come up with something novel and contributing to your, uh, your research area uh, and to the state of the art in the literature of your field. Whereas in final project, of course, this type of final project would be uh, more uh, uh, than welcome, but uh, a very important application of your solution, uh, a practical demonstration, and something along these lines would be also accepted, subject to, of course, approval of your uh, advisor. So all these will be elaborated along the uh, uh, two programs that uh, will be introduced very shortly. So to wrap up my uh, 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 talk with you today, uh, I can also mention about some of the facilities and support for graduate students. Of course, these are for all the students that you, you know, that, that uh, is expected to be in campus, uh, uh, but that applies to master's students with and without thesis as well. So we have uh, 300 plus research uh, laboratories and centers. Uh, in various uh, disciplines, including interdisciplinary research areas as well. We have fantastic high-performance computing cluster and cloud support. And um, there are many, but out of these, uh, I can highlight the one um, on academic writing course, which is quite important uh, for you to write your thesis or your, or your final uh, report, final project report. And like, if you want to go into your... Um, area as, a, as an entrepreneur, if you come up with your startup, your own startup in cybersecurity or in the fields uh, of data science, then our incubation center or KWORKS Entrepreneurship Center uh, will be definitely supporting you to uh, pursue your dream. And of course, we have um, all sorts of support for international students, uh, travel visa, residence permit, accommodation, etc., and social and cultu cultural activities are also provided for international students. I'm sure Melissa will be uh, covering all these at the end of this talk. So uh, again, um, this is all that I can say at this point. Um, so I'm gonna hand over the stage to my colleague, uh, Professor Barish Akkun, who will uh, be um, introducing you with the data science program. Hello, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Shekin. As uh, Melissa introduced, I'm from the computer engineering department. Uh, I work on robotics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And today I will talk to you about our uh, non-thesis Master of Science program in data science. So, as you all know, uh, oops, there is an unprecedented amount of data that is generated uh, every day or even every second. Uh, we have several tools to uh, tackle this data, but it's not enough. And uh, we need more and more expert people in uh, dealing with this data. On the other hand, we are facing unprecedented, uh, unprecedented challenges such as global warming, pandemics, uh, massive amounts of data in astrophysics, or uh, more uh, functional stuff like uh, autonomous uh, driving. So, at Coach, we want to let you develop skills to handle this huge amount of data and tackle these unprecedented uh, challenges. So, we focused on uh, theoretical aspects as well of data processing, uh, data analysis, machine learning, and visualization. We have a very interdisciplinary curriculum, as you'll see in a little bit. Uh, we also want you to gain practical experience uh, this entails uh, programming languages. We heavily use Python, R, and uh, Julia. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of faculty working in these fields. As such, we can impart a lot of our own experience to you in multiple uh, 
domains. And our faculty does both cutting edge research and cutting edge industry projects as well. So if you are admitted to this uh, program or if you want to come, here are the requirements. Uh, you have to finish it in three semesters. There could be some exceptions to this. Uh, you are required to take 30 credits, which equates to 10 courses. You have two required courses, Introduction to Computation Science, which, is, uh, which teaches you how to uh, work with computer programs to do uh, data science and computational science, and the Introduction to Machine Learning, both theoretical and practical aspects. Uh, we have the theory and then we have labs to teach you how to code these. Then we have a vast array of elective courses from engineering departments, from mathematics, economics, uh, medical school, uh, media and visual arts and law as well. So as you can see, it's uh, highly interdisciplinary. In addition to this, you are required to take non-credit courses. Academic writing, which is really important. Uh, you need to be able to convey your results in written format, ethics, uh, and a final project. Uh, which we'll, I will uh, talk about in a little bit. So I'm not going to go over all the elective courses, but I just wanted you to uh, flash uh, the number and the nature of these. If you look at them, several of them, more than half is very advanced, and it reflects the research experience and um, industry experience of our faculty members, especially the special topics ones. Those courses are renewed every year uh, because they are uh, very uh, hot and we will uh, give you the same amount of uh, same state of the art uh, knowledge from these as well. So how you might take uh, some of these courses, we recommend you to finish the first uh, the required courses in your first semester, Introduction to Computation Science and Machine Learning. Then uh, this is a suggestion as your first elective, I would recommend computer vision and then uh, academic writing and scientific research and ethics to get you started. That second term, you can get into more uh, complicated, not complicated, but more advanced uh, topics and more maybe applied uh, topics. And then perhaps in the third term, finish with uh, even more uh, state of the art and uh, topics, which will also help you with your final project as well. So. Uh, all non-thesis programs in Turkey requires you to do a final project, and I think this is to an advantage. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of experienced faculty, and our final project will include you to, uh, you know, match up with the faculty, have regular meetings and deliverable uh, reports, and at the end, we will ask you to uh, present it. It's going to be applied. It's going to be, uh, you know, from a real problem and not a toy problem, so it's going to be very useful. I want to uh, finish by talking about the research experience as well. Uh, as I said, we have many, many faculty members working on this. And this culminated in a uh, joint artificial intelligence research center. Uh, Ishbank is, uh, is the biggest private bank in Turkey. They uh, generously donated some amount of money for us to fund this research center. Uh, that's why we are able to uh, fund our uh, computational infrastructure that Azurja uh, mentioned. In addition, we have uh, robotics infrastructure as well. And uh, all of our faculty members does uh, high impact work. It's too uh, much to uh, convey really. If you're interested, visit ai.ku.edu.tr. We have our, our research uh, synopsis there as well. And uh, even though our, this research center and this program is newly founded, we have a strong coach alumni network. Uh, we have people that went to uh, the States, Europe, uh, starts up in Turkey, big companies in Turkey. And uh, we have a lot of them uh, working on data science as well. Uh, with that, I finished the uh, data science part. I will uh, take your questions at the end and I want to hand over to my colleague, uh, Professor Altekin. Thank you, Professor. So now I would like to tell our attendees about the master's program in cybersecurity. Uh, so next slide, please. If, so why, why do we care about cybersecurity? Essentially, cyber is anything done using computers and computer networks. And uh, when you deal with computers and computer networks, security is one of the most critical aspects. And this is not just what we are seeing. This is essentially 
uh, worldwide need according to the report in just 2019. So last year's report says there are 4 million cybersecurity expert job positions that are open. These positions need to be filled by educated experts like you with credentials from uh, education institutes like Koch University. But why Koch University? Because we have more than 10 years of expertise in doing research and education in cryptography, cybersecurity, data privacy. So throughout these more than 10 years of research, we have worked on cloud systems, security of cloud systems, uh, authentication mechanisms, recently blockchain, sometimes even privacy preserving machine learning techniques. We will talk about some of these maybe later again. And in terms of education, we received four times uh, essentially teaching innovation awards for our courses, for our courses on cryptography, on computer security, network security, and algorithms. So when you join this program, you are going to learn both practical and theoretical aspects of many things. So first of all, cryptology. Why? If you need to be a cybersecurity expert, you need to know how to employ the proper cryptographic tools and how to use them correctly. Then you should learn about computer systems, things like computer networks, operating systems. But further, you need to also have a business mind. You need to do risk analysis, strategic planning. You need to learn about some law and regulations, things like GDPR or KVKK in Turkey. These are data protection regulations. Then you learn about cloud solutions, distributed systems, and there are many applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence in security as well. And when you learn all these and earn your credential, where can you work at? These are limitless. Software companies would hire you. Name any bank, they need a security, cybersecurity expert. Multinationals, any giant you can name, Google, Microsoft, whatever you want. These all hire cybersecurity experts, medical device producers, Internet of Things, Internet of Everything vendors. In general, any company, who does something cyber, meaning does something related to computers and computer networks, they need cybersecurity experts. We have our alumni that graduated from our group. They uh, went to different places in Singapore, in Europe, in USA, in Canada, both to universities to continue their education or to companies. Uh, for example, our very recent graduates went to blockchain-based companies to use their degree. Next slide, please. Can we switch? It switched the degree card. Okay, now I see, sorry. Okay. There is a delay. Okay, so the degree requirements are similar. These are actually national rules. Two required courses, essentially these are computer and network security and modern cryptography, and you have elective courses from many disciplines, so from cybersecurity, computer engineering, electronical engineering, industrial engineering, mathematics, law, etc. And then there are these non-credit courses that benefit you, seminar courses, writing, ethics courses, and this master's project. And in designing this degree, we didn't just make up a program. We've used world-class interdisciplinary programs, essentially the one uh, from the ACM, Association of Co uh, Computing Machinery. We can switch. I guess there's a delay. So here you see there are cybersecurity specific electives. There are computer science and engineering electives. There are electronical engineering, industrial engineering, economics, chemical and biological engineering, and many different courses that you can take. These, so you remember, you need to take eight out of 
these courses, these electives. So it's a very interdisciplinary program that you can shape based on your needs. And next slide, please, our final slide. We also provide you with a suggested template. So when the slide switches, we can all see. This is a three term template, but the third term can be the summer term. So essentially you can complete this degree within one year in total. And this is of course just a suggested curriculum. It's not mandatory. Two of these courses are mandatory. The others are elective, but additionally, the last term you need to finish your final project. This is what uh, Professor Özgür Barış Akan told you about. Thank you, Professor. So now we go back to the general discussion. Hello again, it's uh, Melissa here. I'm going to now move to the rest of our presentation. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Barish and Professor Alptekin for um, giving us the part that I'm going to talk about now. It's more the procedural, procedural part of how to apply to these master programs. Um, I also have um, in our panelists, we have Ms. Elif Tuisus, who is the coordinator for the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering, and she will also be able to give you more information during the Q&A part. So briefly to go through the application requirements. So the first thing is that you should have completed a bachelor's degree in engineering, science, or a related field. So you, you may have studied computer engineering or computer sciences, industrial engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, um, basic sciences or related kind of interdisciplinary programs. So that would um, uh, be eligible to apply for admission to the program. With that um, bachelor's degree, you should also include the transcript of all the universities that you have attended, which show your final grade point average and the courses that you took in your undergraduate degree. Um, depending on your background, uh, for some candidates, we may request a standard uh, graduate admission test, such as the GRE for international students or the ALICE um, test for Turkish applicants. But again, this is an optional part of the application process. Because both programs are taught in English, so the courses and the supervision is going to be conducted in English, and also because of national regulations, you do have to provide an English proficiency test. Um, currently, uh, you will see on the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering a list of the tests that are accepted. So the most common one that we receive for applicants is the TOEFL internet-based test with a minimum score of 80. Now, other exams that are also accepted if you're joining us from Turkey are, for example, the Yokdil um, Yedese or E Yedese exams. Many of you might right, sorry, right now might be wondering if we do accept the IELTS English test. The answer is yes for applications. Right now, the Higher Education Council of Turkey does not recognize IELTS as an English proficiency test for enrollment. However, if you have already taken the IELTS exam and you got a score above 6.5, you can apply to the program to the Masters in Data Science or in Cybersecurity with your current valid test score. If you are offered admission to the program, to any of these two programs, um, then you will need to take the TOEFL IBT test in order to be enrolled. But there's going to be some flexibility with regards to that, and I'll talk about it in the next slide, because we know right now it is not particularly accessible. Uh, there's no test dates or test centers in every country. You will also need two recommendation letters. This can be from academic referees or professional referees. If you have already graduated um, several years ago or not so, not so many years ago, um, and you prefer to provide professional references from supervisors or colleagues or clients, you can also do that. You don't upload the letters yourself to the um, online application, but you write the contact details of these two referees and they will receive a letter from the graduate school asking them to upload a letter 
either as a Word document or to type directly their recommendation. Then two very important elements of this process are the statement of purpose and the CV, because this is essentially where you will demonstrate what is your motivation for joining the program, um, why specifically you want to study this at Koch University, and um, what makes you a strong candidate. So what are your strengths in terms of your previous background, your academic or professional background? If you have any specific skills that you may have um, developed or learned independently or through your coursework and topics that you're interested in. And what do you plan to do um, by earning this degree in terms of your career aspirations? So that statement of purpose, it's, it's a motivation letter in which you explain why you want to join the program. There is no established or set format in terms of minimum number of words or characters and maximum number of characters or pages. Um, but of course, our recommendation, not only for this master's, but also for all of our programs, is to make sure that you're concise and that you use the space well to come across to the faculty evaluators in the best light possible so that they can see why you would be a great addition to the cohort of students that will be selected for this year's uh, admission. And the last thing there is the CV, so a curriculum vitae. Again, there's no uh, predetermined sort of format if you need, if you want to use an academic format for your CV or Europass format or a more an American resume format, that's okay. Just make sure that, again, that your strengths, uh, which are relevant to the, the program are highlighted there. So if you have any previous knowledge, for example, of programming or you have taken some specific courses in universities that would be relevant for the elective or the required courses that we saw on the previous slides, then this is a place that you can also mention those. Okay. So um, the process works is this, you submit, you complete and submit an online application in our online application system. We will put the details at the end. Um, after you submit that, then the faculty members will be checking regularly the submitted applications and they make shortlist of eligible candidates. Those candidates may be contacted by the graduate school to be interviewed. The interview, we can talk about that uh, maybe with Professor Barish and Professor Aptekin during the Q&A. Um, and then after that interview, if you have performed well, then they might offer uh, an acceptance to the program or a, in some cases conditional offer if they if they consider that you do need to provide some additional information such as a standard test score if it's a, a straightforward um, acceptance then you can come to register as a student for the fall semester if you're planning to apply for a fall semester or during the spring semester if you're planning to apply for admission to our spring semester. The dates for the start of fall 2020 have not been announced yet by the university, so we know that there is a bit of uncertainty in this regard, and we ask you to please be patient because we, we need to wait for the national um, regulator as well, as well to tell us as a university when the academic year will start, and therefore we will be able to plan and inform all admitted students both for these two programs and for all of our programs. What we want you to know is that we will have a rolling evaluation of the applications until early September 2020. Meaning, um, if you're not able to apply immediately in the next you know, month or so to submit your application. Of course, if you have all of the documents that we showed earlier ready, um, then please do ahead and go ahead and apply. Okay, and we are aiming to provide um, an answer back to you as an applicant between two to three weeks of um, after you submit the application. Now, with regards to the TOEFL test, because we know that it might not be possible for you as an applicant if you haven't taken the test already, or if you have a test that is already expired, um, you will still be evaluated without the TOEFL test and you will be evaluated on the basis of all the other information and documents that we mentioned in the application requirements uh, part. Um, if you don't have a TOEFL test score, then again, you may receive a conditional offer. We will, you know, like the evaluators will, will make a, a whole appraisal of you as a candidate and then decide if they want to issue a full acceptance or a conditional offer. But uh, it is required by national regulations to have a valid TOEFL test score, again, either by the fall 
2020 registration week or during the first semester. Okay, now we're going to talk about tuition and scholarships. I know this is also important for many of you who are joining us today. With regards to, um, to tuition, we have um, the, for the academic year 2020-21, so the upcoming academic year, the tuition for the Master in Data Science and for the Masters in Cybersecurity is 110,000. Turkish lira. At the current exchange rate between the Turkish lira and the dollars, this is approximately $15,000. Of course, there's a lot of volatility nowadays with our exchange rate. It may become more affordable, I would say, if things continue the way they are, for those of you who are coming from, um, from outside of Turkey. But the tuition is paid in Turkish lira. There are some limited tuition scholarships available, and they're based on academic merit. I'm sure you will have questions about what, what exactly constitutes academic merit. And I will um, ask that question on behalf of you to Professor Barish and Professor Alptekin to give you some guidance. But please know that there's no black and white um, uh, answer to this in the sense of a specific GPA or a GPA above this uh, doesn't uh, equal a specific scholarship. The, Partial tuition scholarships that we can offer are of 25% of the tuition, which would bring the tuition to 82,500 Turkish lira, or 50% tuition, which would bring the tuition to 55,000 Turkish lira. This does not include any other benefits in terms of um, accommodation or stipend or um, yeah, any other type of benefits. If you are a Coach University alumni, um, then you receive a 25% tuition scholarship. So that's a benefit for our current students. Very briefly, um, if you're joining us from outside of Turkey today, thank you so much again for joining. I know we have very different time zones for some of the people who are joining us today, um, but we really encourage you to check our international admissions website. You can see the address there. It's international.ku.edu.tr. We have a section on how to apply to our master and PhD programs. Most of the advice, it's of course, uh, more towards the research programs that we have, the masters with thesis and PhD, but you will find useful guidance in terms of how to write the sample, um, sorry, the statement of purpose, how to prepare your documents, um, and other practical guidance. Okay, so we're getting ready now, we're getting ready for your questions. If you want to keep in touch or want to find out more, of course, the first place to check is our Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering website, which you see there, gsse.ku.edu.tr. You can also contact the team via email. They receive a lot of inquiries every day, especially in, in the next, you know, this month and next month are the highest or the busiest periods for them. So please do uh, keep that in mind. If you don't receive an answer immediately in the first 24 hours, um, Please know that it, they're on top of things, but they may reply to you a bit after that. And if you're an international participant and you will be submitting an application, and if you have any questions, then you can, as I said, visit our international admissions website. We are also on Instagram and you can follow us. We also now have a coach engineering Instagram account, by the way, we should have put that here, that I, um, that I really recommend you to follow because it's going to be a great place to have a glimpse of our College of Engineering, College of Science and Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering activities in terms of our programs, faculty members, students, alumni, events, webinars like this. So please follow that if you can as well. Okay, so now we have arrived at our Q&A section. So what I'm going to do now is I will ask Professor Alptekin, Professor Barish and Professor Özgür to uh, open their cameras and I will start to check the questions that have come in so far and read the questions. Okay, so the first one is, can I submit my recommendation or reference letters by myself? As we said, uh, no. So you need to write down the name and the email address of your referees and they will be contacted to, to submit their the recommendations. What you need to make sure is that they submit them as soon as possible, because this is an important part of the evaluation. So in order for, for the faculty members to get a, a good idea of you as a whole candidate, they want to see the recommendation letters as well. 
So just make sure that you remind them to submit them on time. Uh, be even before you submit the application, they can submit their letters, okay? Okay. Uh, Melissa, may I add one thing there? Uh, yeah, of course. It's yeah. been also answered by Elif and, uh, such that if there's any problem using the online application system, the referees may also send their letters by email to our institute email address or even to us directly. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, now I'm checking the answer questions. Thank you for that. Um, so the other question was, could someone without a degree in science and background in engineering, but from social sciences, master's degree, join the master's in data science? And we have an answer here as well that uh, Professor Barish also replied. Um, yeah, so for, for all participants, uh, because the courses do require mathematics and programming background, they need to see the specifics of which courses or any learning that you have done that, that can prepare you for the level of, of maths and programming that will be included. Um, IELTS, we talked about IELTS already in terms of, yes, you can apply with your IELTS. Um, there was a question here about somebody who wants to do a PhD but has done a non-thesis master's program if it would affect the application negatively and if you if we offer these programs with the thesis and yes the answer is exactly like you can apply to a master's in computer engineering uh, master's with thesis so that you can fill that requirement um, Elisa Hanım, yeah may i add something about this because there are other related questions yes. so uh, the computer science and engineering program has a master's with thesis as you said but uh, both the evaluation procedure and the requirements are different. You need, as uh, Professor Akan told, you need to perform world-class research during your master's and then write a thesis about this. You need to create academic publications regarding your thesis. Whereas in the non-thesis programs that uh, we discussed today, both for data science and cybersecurity, you are not required to publish. You learn you do a project to improve yourself, both in terms of theoretical and practical aspects, but you don't create a thesis. You don't need to create academic publications. You, uh, the coursework are different. And then at the end, if you finish a non-thesis degree by national regulations, you cannot start a PhD degree. Okay, great. Thank you so much for answering that. And there was a question here, to become a master's student in the AI labs working on machine learning problems, would it be more appropriate to apply for the data science program, the computer science and engineering program, or the computational sciences and engineering programs? Um, Professor uh, Barish replied, um, yeah, that you should apply to either the computer engineering or computational sciences program. If you just, you know, if you want to work in a lab, th that would be fine. Um, and yes, that's a very good advice, Professor Barish, like if that they should contact the professors to make sure that, you know, that your interests and specifically in, in uh, machine learning. Professor Barish said, we are holding a webinar tomorrow afternoon. I hope you can hear me. I think my internet is a bit shaky right now. Um, we're holding a webinar tomorrow afternoon with all of the faculty members in the artificial intelligence laboratory. And they will be presenting in more detail the specific research that they're doing, including a work on machine learning. We have another question here. Let me just scroll down for a second. Um, okay, uh, a question about TOEFL certificate, can I apply without it? Yes, as we explained, because, because of this year, there's a bit of relaxation in terms of these requirements, but you will need to provide a TOEFL eventually, either during the registration week or during the first semester of the program. Um, there is a question here, uh, I'm a coach graduate, thank you so much for joining. And then working a technology consulting firm, I want to do masters in data science, but is there any exceptions for people who will be working during the program? Excellent questions. Example, like lessons at nights or weekends, ability to finish it in more than three semesters. I'm asking this because the program in current form is not suitable for people who are working. Uh, as, so if professor, can you, 
would you would like to answer that uh, regards to data? Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I can I do it, Melissa? Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, there is no need for an exception here. Um, the, the program is uh, constructed over these three semesters, and all of the courses, at least in one of the suggested curriculum. Of course, you can have tons of different constellation of the courses, right? Because we have so many electives, but in at least one of the suggested curriculum. Uh, all of the courses will be available also online in case you may not be able to make it to the campus for all the courses, okay? And especially for some of the new ones that will be uh, provided in class, uh, we are uh, considering, uh, I think the question is from Emre Ingesu, right? We're considering uh, to use uh, one of um, our premises uh, uh, which is part of the Koch University Ishbankasu AI Research Center, which is within the you know, downtown area. Uh, so we have uh, different ways of, of relaxing the uh, concerns that you may have in your mind, okay? So in, in short, there won't be uh, any need for exceptions. So the uh, content will be available um, for you to consume uh, remotely. But of course, the programs are on campus uh, programs. These are not fully online programs by definition. Hope this clarifies uh, Emre's question and some others as well. Great, thank you. Another question here. What if I couldn't reach my professor? I guess you're referring to the people who would provide a recommendation for you. Um, as I said, like if you can contact them via email, to request a recommendation, that's what you can do. They don't have to submit a recommendation letter, for example, on university letterhead paper or with a wet signature that you then that they then scan into a PDF document. We know that they might not have access to these resources right now. So the important thing is that um, you know that they should have supervised you in some way or form. So if it's more professional or um, referees, that's also valid for this master program. Then we have another question, um, whether the tuition fee uh, of $15,000 for one year includes the summer course or I guess summer semester, the answer is yes. So that's for the whole program. Um, then another question, what is the GPA minimum for cybersecurity? Do we want to, do we have an, an answer or maybe a, a GPA kind of, what, so, what constitutes, I guess I, I'll rephrase the question like, um, I know it's, it's not a black and white answer. Is there what you gauge to be a acceptable GPA uh, or it depends more on the institution or it depends more on the degree? Exactly. I mean, I can maybe elaborate on that. We, it depends on so many other issues. So GPA is not something absolute uh, across the globe, right? So, and this program is open to people who have the interest and who have sufficient background and motivation uh, to pursue and successfully finish this. Uh, we do not set out a specific GPA because it might be misleading. Of course, GPA is part of the admission process. Of course, it's one of the credentials that we look into. I mean, we cannot ignore that definitely, but it is not something independent and absolute value. We just, uh, uh, with which we set a threshold, okay? We'll look into all the credentials, including GPA, but also, you know, the, the, the industry that you might be working, the, the experience that you may already have from your, uh, you know, um, uh, professional lives, of course, including your educational background, and GPA will be one of them. So we thought that it might be, um, you know, misleading to set a specific number for these two programs. Thank you. Um, Professor, if I may tie this to the academic merit scholarships as well. So there is no set fixed, as you said, uh, let's say GPA, etc. Uh, values, because we evaluate your application as a whole. What's your educational background, your maybe work experience, your recommendations, your CV awards, etc. All of these will be evaluated as a whole. Great. Thank you. A professor for Professor Kupchu, what are the difference 
differences of course materials in the cybersecurity program and the computer science and engineering program. Uh, I guess the courses referring to cryptography, security, and privacy. Are there any differences? If there are, what are they? I guess the course content. So uh, this is, I believe, Sajat's yes, question, yes. right? Uh -huh. Yes. So let me answer the question from a different viewpoint. Uh, first of all, as we just discussed, if you want to do a master's in computer science and engineering with thesis, it's a different route. We assign you thesis topics. We have different topics in our cryptography, cybersecurity and privacy research group if you want to do a master's with thesis. Whereas if you do this non-thesis cybersecurity program, it's a much more relaxed case. You don't do a thesis. You pick your own cybersecurity topic to work on with our guidance. Uh, so the topics are different. In terms of courses, yes, if you do a cybersecurity non-thesis master's, you have elective courses from computer science and engineering. That's also the case, but there are also cybersecurity specific offerings that we are listing as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question. Can international students receive a hundred percent scholarship for this, uh, for data science or cybersecurity? And I guess the answer is no. Um, we should be clear about that. Um, if you if you need a hundred percent scholarship to pursue your graduate studies, then as a previous um, question that was answered, then you can apply for our thesis masters in computer science and engineering or computational sciences and engineering. Does that make sense? I hope that answers the question. Um, and sorry, yeah. just as a small note about this as well. Of course, the evaluation criteria of uh, let's say non-thesis cybersecurity or non-thesis data science versus thesis computer science and engineering or thesis computational science and engineering are different. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So there will be, um, you know, ex higher expectations, I guess, in terms of academic performance and potential because there is research involved in the thesis master programs. Um, okay. So we have a question about the transcript certificate. Uh, it's not available in my university will it, and it will be available next month. That's okay. As we said, um, there is a rolling kind of admissions process. So you can apply uh, later than June. You can apply in July uh, or August. So whenever you receive your official transcript from your university, once you have that and all the other elements that we mentioned in the application requirements, then you should submit your application. Um, I have, there's a question here from Mohammed. Uh, so he's saying, I'm a computer engineering student at Qatar University and I'm done with my senior project this semester, but unfortunately I still need to wait for one course, which, off, which is offered only in spring semester. So my expected official graduation will be May, 2021. Uh, can I apply for your program? And if not, when should I apply for that, please? So I guess for fall 2021. Exactly. I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if, if you don't have it now, and if you will have it over the next couple of months, it might be okay before you get the graduation, you know, some sort of certificate. But for, if it is going to be next year, it's fall 2021. Yeah. Exactly. Also, because um, uh, to enroll as a student in any master programs in any Turkish universities, you should demonstrate that you have completed your previous degree, your previous. Uh, yes. Bachelor Late, degree. At least latest by at the registration step. Yeah. yeah. So meaning uh, you should show a diploma or a graduation certificate by the time you need to enroll in the program, for example. So if you're applying for full admission, so by September, you should have an official graduation certificate. Otherwise, um, our registrar's office is not able to enroll you as a new student. Okay. Okay, um, is there any financial support from the university side if a student is faced with financial problems during the master's program? Um, that's a good question. It, so for our non-thesis master programs, we don't have a set, um, let's say fund for any type of student emer like financial emergency situations at the graduate level. 
uh, which is different from our thesis or PhD programs because they are, you know, they are fits. So we advise students, especially if you're coming from outside of Turkey, that you plan very well how you're going to manage or how you're going to fund your living expenses whilst living here in, in Istanbul and doing the program in terms of accommodation, food, you know, if there's any need, well, books and coursework uh, for health insurance as well. Um, some students, for example, may be eligible to apply from their own countries to educational loans or credits to fund it, their tuition and living expenses. So we would advise you to check if there's options like that in the country that you're from, either from private banks or foundations or other sources, okay? But we don't have at the moment any type of um, financial support for non-thesis master students. So we have another question. Um, so here's a question of someone with a bachelor's in biochemistry and an MBA. Um, am I qualified to apply for the master's in data science? But I have to, okay, master's in data science. And I think, I hope you can hear my voice if my connection is not. Yeah, I can, I can hear that. I mean, these are not ma major obstacles or, you know, killing obstacles, so to say, uh, to, to avoid your application to Master of Science in Data Science. As we said previously, we, we, we just checked all the credentials. Uh, so you may have sufficient background even if you uh, are a graduate of biochemistry degree. So you feel free to apply in short answer. Okay, thank you. Just to um, clarify the yeah. question, maybe this was a mistake, but the question says with thesis, there is no yep. data science or cybersecurity master with thesis. Mm -hmm. These are without thesis. Yes. Thank you. Then um, another question, what is the price range for hostel and campus? I guess you're referring to our dormitories um, for international students. So for graduate uh, non-thesis master students, the new academic year accommodation fees have not been published yet, but in terms of the current academic year, uh, if I'll, I'll express this in dollars. So it ranges from $2,000 to $5,000 per academic year, which covers two semesters. It does not include the summer semester. That would be an extra payment. But you can, uh, yeah, if you want to think about living expenses, you can budget between those ranges. It depends on the type of room that you will be, um, uh, that you will prefer or that's within your budget. And also in our website that I mentioned before, an international.ku.edu.tr, we have a link to a page which provides a very useful comparison where you can see like living costs for Istanbul and you can compare it to your current city. So um, again, it really depends on your lifestyle choices, how many times you eat out, if you're going to be using a car or not, if you're going to, again, use privately rented accommodation or the student dormitories, and it can give you an idea of living expenses in Istanbul. For undergraduate students, for example, we ask them to budget between $400 to $600 per month to cover their living expenses. Um, and there's people, of course, who can live with less than that, and there's people who, can, who need to more than that because of individual circumstances. So I hope that answers your question. Let's see if we have more questions here. I think we don't. So if we don't have any, let me just double check. I'm not missing any other questions. Uh, we had one here that wasn't answered by Professor Barish. Does having a related degree in computer field is it compulsory for applying for computer engineering masters with thesis? So this is referring to the computer engineering masters. Um, and yeah, so it says not compulsory. Um, but the courses yeah, require some level of math and programming, so a relevant degree will be beneficial. And again, everyone is assessed individually, and as we have said before, it's just making sure that you demonstrate how your specific background and skills and experience um, have a good fit with the program, and that you will be able to cope with the content of the courses that are going to be offered in the, in the master or the PhD program. Okay, so if those are all the questions, let me go back to the open one. Oh, okay, so we have a question here. Um, 
So a very practical question. What option should we select in English language proficiency section if there is no option for IELTS? Please select TOEFL. And in the writing, reading, and um, speaking section, you're going to write your IELTS score. So we know that the scales are different, but we will know that you're referring to an IELTS test score. And on the attachments, where you have to attach the test score report, you can attach your IELTS report. Um, uh, okay, there's a question here. Somebody who has already applied for the data science with thesis uh, program. Yeah, there was a, a bit of a glitch in the application system that should have not been open. But all of those uh, people who already submitted an application for the data science with thesis will be evaluated for the master's in computer science with thesis program. Um, by the faculty members in the next few weeks. So if you apply during the early application period, um, I think Elif Hanem can also maybe give us an update on that in terms of, um, so people who have already submitted an application, what are the, the next steps? Like what, you know, like the next couple of weeks, I think. Uh, they will, they will, yeah, yeah, they will hear shortly uh, for their, uh, you know, admission results because they will, they will be evaluated for, as you said, Master of Science in Computer Science with Thesis uh, program. So okay. their application will not be void. So we okay. will evaluate and get them get back to them. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. But if they would like to apply for non-thesis, uh, they should reapply. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Thank you, Arctic Energy. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Um, another question. Do English, if, if I'm an English native speaker, do we need TOEFL? Uh, no, but there is a set list of countries which are classified by the Higher Education Council as uh, native English countries. So you need to check if um, your country is in that list or not. Uh, just We know because we do get a lot of inquiries about this. For example, Pakistan and Nigeria, unfortunately, are not included in that list. So even if you have done all of your education in English, um, you will still need to provide a TOEFL test score. As we said, because of this year's situation, you can provide that by the time you come to register, if you're accepted, or during the first semester. Okay, I have no other questions here. I think we're doing very well in terms of time. So if there are no, no other questions, let's just thank you, Isra, okay, for your message. So yeah, so I think we're going to wrap up for today. I want to thank again, uh, Professor Azgur, Professor Barish and Professor Altekim for joining us today and um, sharing their, oh, there's a raised hand. I think there's somebody who wants to ask something. So I guess they're typing now. If the person who raised their hand can type the question we can answer that. We have a bit of time. So if you need to leave now, uh, please do. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, we are going to be hosting this webinar tomorrow for Artificial Intelligence uh, Laboratory. And if you want to learn more about that specific center and their work, make sure that you register. You will find the link on the uh, Grad School of Sciences and Engineering website, also on our website. Okay, let's see if the person types the question or if they were just <laughs> raising their, their hand, maybe. Okay. Okay, so in that case, then we will say goodbye for now. We hope you stay safe, you stay healthy, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining. So oh, there is a question here, okay. <laughs> and so with regards to English proficiency, how am I going to fulfill the requirements? So as, as we said, uh, you will be asked to take the TOEFL internet-based test in your country or you know, if you're accepted once you are in Turkey um, and then provide the TOEFL IBT test score. You ask ETS to send it to Coach University and you, you will also receive an electronic copy of your test score report. If you are accepted to the program, and you um, take it whilst you're in Turkey, it needs to be taken at a state university and a public university test center. There's a specific rule about that, but please be assured that the graduate school will give you details on how to do all of that, okay? Okay, so let's see. Mm. 
I think those are all the questions for today. Yes, okay. All right, so we're going to close now the webinar. Uh, we will stop recording. As we said, we're going to um, post the video to our YouTube channel uh, and you will receive an automatic email from Zoom where you can see the link and you can watch it again uh, after two days, okay? So thank you so much for now. If professors want to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you guys. Thank you for being with yep. us. Yeah, really thanks for attending. Goodbye and good luck. Yeah, if you have any other questions, you can reach us out via email. Yep. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Elifano. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.